Hey everybody, <laughs> man it's been a while so I'm probably quite nervous but welcome to the latest edition of No Exaggeration, my podcast. Uh, today is a really special one because it's about, it's about my journey with drinking. Now to put that into context, um, I'm 29 years old and I've been sober for about eight years. So I used to drink quite heavily when I was 20, you know, from my ages of 18 to oh, 17 to 20, 21. And then after that, I quit. Um, you know, obviously there's a lot of things leading up to it, but you know, I've been sober ever since, but you know, there's a big journey going up and down and around and you know, it's funny what you learn on the way. But before we get started, I just want to say a big thank you to my wife, who's right here helping me. I didn't want to talk to myself. <laughs> and I didn't want to talk in a room to myself because you know, after five minutes or so, it'll be like, fire, you're just talking to yourself. <laughs> so she's here helping me. She didn't want to be on camera. <laughs> don't know why but uh you know thank you to my wife um she's here can you say hello hi i don't think my mic's working though are you sure yeah because there's only one track showing okay say something hello yeah it is working okay Oh my god. <laughs> but yeah, um, she's basically a. I, I dragged her into it because I didn't want to talk to myself. And she's just, yeah, she's here to help me. Um, like she has been. Oh my <laughs> like that. Like when the camera stuffs up, bring it back up. But, you know, it's cool. Um, uh, before I start, I just want to say, like, this is not to tell anybody what to do at all because just like I said it's been a journey and you know you learn heaps of things on the way when you sober up so this is not to tell anybody what to do but I do know for sure that there are people that would benefit from this because um, you know people take alcohol a lot of people drink alcohol some drink it the right way some drink it the wrong way and I know what it's like to drink it the wrong way so I know for sure it'll help some people um, yeah so just know that I'm not trying to tell anybody what to do and also I'm not gonna I wish I could be perfect in this podcast and mention everything I should and not mention everything I shouldn't but I'm not sorry <laughs> please bear with me um, I'm just having a bit of fun with this and you know you only live once eh? so anyone out there if you want to do something try it out but yeah uh, we'll get it started um I've got questions that my good mates had for me at the end, so I'll answer some questions and anything that Mavis comes up with, she'll chuck in there. Uh, so basically, I started drinking when I was 15. Um, I Why? don't know. Hey? Why? Oh, true. Uh, I grew up, um, a lot of my family drank. Um, I actually thought it was normal. I thought it was normal to drink and normal to get wasted. I really did, and just to carry on, you know, you don't, you know, when you're growing up and you see that stuff, it wasn't that bad, but it gets, it becomes normal. Um, I started drinking. I just was curious, really. I, you know, I saw that it seemed like fun, a lot of laughing, all that kind of stuff, and I was curious. So I started, you know, I started drinking when I was about 15. Um, it was just to have fun, really have a bit of fun curious with my friends and then so that was 15 and then the older I got you know it didn't it wasn't every weekend maybe up maybe when I was 17 or 18 it was it was every weekend and then every weekend turned into like twice a week um, yeah and then you know when you drink you you you, you encounter clubbing and going out to town and all that kind of stuff even if you're still in school um, but that was the reason why I started drinking was just to have a bit of fun um, when I got about to high school well, leaving high school I started to drink a bit heavier um, and then when I got about 19 20 I started drinking very heavily um, you know the older you get you you know at the time you're, you're still young but you think that you're older than you are like when you're 18 19 you're only 18 or 19 but you know at the time sometimes you think you've got these big problems that are gonna the world's gonna end and you know you start meeting new people um <laughs> and then 
yeah so i started drinking a bit more heavier <laughs> like how often uh probably like twice a week turned into three times a week and how long um you know when you're like 16 or 17 getting home at like two is pretty normal oh i don't know if it's normal but getting home at like two and then it turned into getting home at five and then you know by the time i was 18 or 19 we were drinking till the next day even you know just days and days and um but yeah so leading up to when i was about 20 years old i you know i started getting into a bit of trouble or i was getting into trouble when i was throughout my teens but you know like trouble that could turn serious at around 19 20 and i thought before that i did try and stop that's one thing um that i'm really grateful now is that i tried to stop so many times but um it just didn't work i'd have one week off and then one week you know that kind of stuff i could never really say no um and then it got to a point where i was getting into a bit of trouble um you know getting you know with on the wrong side of the tracks with the law and stuff not serious as don't want to i'm not going to exaggerate but it's the beginning of what could be serious um and then i thought to myself okay i need to kind of i need to have to give it a proper effort to stop so by the time i got to around 20 years old um i was i was in court and i remember the judge hadn't met me or anything but she said she said you know i can see by your file that a lot of the reasons why you're getting in trouble is because you're intoxicated and that all oh, that that kind of hit me hard because I thought, how can a judge who doesn't really know someone, I, I'm not saying this, um, I'm saying she's right, but what I'm saying is that it must be really obvious that a judge can look at something and read all the facts and think it's because you drink too much. And that really stuck with me. I don't remember her name or anything like that, but I thought, man, this, this must be a real problem and it must be really obvious, but I just can't see it. And I'll never forget that to this day. And, you know, I, I didn't stop then, but, you know, that was one of the factors that came in. Um, and then anyway, leading up to New Year's, this is going, so I was 21. Oh, one thing I wanted to say before was that, you know, when I was 20, um, me and my friends, we, we, we kind of made a pact to, to quit drinking for a few months. And we did, we quit drinking in, in December and I was turning 21 in Feb because my birthday is in Feb and we were clean for two months and it was the best feeling that we've ever had we were much fitter you know sharper in your brain all that kind of stuff um but then my birthday came around and i remember one of my best friends his name's rima he goes oh i don't really want to drink at your birthday because he felt so good and then i thought there's no way you're gonna not drink at my birthday <laughs> I drank at your birthday, <laughs> nah, but you know, there was no way he wasn't going to drink at my birthday because, you know, that culture, it's my birthday, you need to celebrate, all that kind of stuff, and you know, when I look back, I wish I didn't force him to drink at my birthday because, I mean, you know, only God knows what would have happened, but because we were going so well, you know, who knows, we might have, things might have changed, but anyway, um, I told him, we'll drink on my birthday and then we'll stop after that because we can carry on you know training and all that kind of stuff anyway i turned 21 we had a big ass birthday party obviously we drank a lot um but you know what it only got worse after that you know even no matter even though we had a two month break and we were clean fit healthy when i drank on my 21st it only got worse because another friend of mine turned 21 the next month or the next week um and then after that someone else turned 21 because you know well, we all went to school together and then you know you just realize that there's always going to be something that comes up if you're not strong you know if you're not strong and when you say no someone's birthday someone's graduation or you know anything really and you know i kind of wish i didn't make him drink back then because who knows um but anyway that year was you know crazy and then it got to the point where it went to new year's um going into 2012 i made a promise to myself i said okay i'm gonna have one last massive drink going into new year's and then starting the year 2012 i won't drink again for uh, until my birthday which is feb the next year and anyway um 
or far out. One, <laughs> that was one of the craziest nights of my life and you know I nearly lost one of my close friends that, that night because of being stupidly drunk. And like I said, not everyone drinks like this. I respect you if you can drink properly. I really do. But, you know, I, you know, that saying when you horse it, I horsed it on him. And, you know, it, it, I nearly lost him as a friend. And he's a very close friend of mine. I won't say his name because he might give me a hiding. But um, anyway, he, he nearly didn't forgive me. And this is someone who who doesn't really take things personal. So I nearly lost a good friend. And anyway, that was the breaking point for me on New Year's Day when I was trying to text him, trying to call him. He wouldn't text me back. And, you know, I thought that his phone was dead or whatever, but I called him on a private number and he answered. So he had his phone on him the whole time, but he just didn't get back to me. And that was the one moment I thought to myself, what the hell am I doing? You know, you do all these other dumb things and it's like with that judge, like I remember my sister told me you need to stop drinking, my mum would tell me, my good friends would tell me, like it's funny, you don't listen to all these important people that say these things, but it takes for something else to make you really realise, you know, what the you know. So it was that moment when I realized that he wasn't he wasn't getting back to me and I possibly could have lost a, a very good friend of mine who's been there for me, you know, throughout my whole life. Um, and you know, I, you know, I, not everyone here is watching is a Christian, but I'm a Christian and I, I prayed to the Lord and I said, please help me because it's like when, you know, when you realize you've hurt someone on top of all the other people you've hurt that you really need help. And, you know, I felt the Lord answered my prayer and, you know, that was the start of it really being hung over on New Year's Day, I wasn't going to drink again because that night didn't end well and I wanted to end it properly. You know, you make excuses like, oh, no, no, I'll do it now. But I was too hung over. So thank God I was hung over and <laughs> too hung over to drink again because I wanted to. Um, anyway, going, you know, the next few months after that, I, I was off the drink and, you know, I knew I knew something had happened because my birthday rolled around again, so December to Feb, and it was the perfect scene you could, it's the most perfect scene you could think of. Me and my friends for my birthday went to have a barbecue at Piha. My best friends. The, it was a really sunny day because it's summer um, during Feb. We had a barbecue. I even bought my alcohol. And we stacked it up at Piha and I thought, yeah, I, I deserve this, you know, two months and my friend had forgiven me by then, he was there on the trip, so, you know, there was nothing holding me back at all, but, and I decided I was going to drink on the way there, I was like, sweet, and then, for some reason, this is never, I don't know if it's happened before, but, you know, before I actually drank, it was a corona too, before I actually drank, I thought to myself, being sober has been the felt so good it's been so good having a clear head it's been so good not doing something on a Sunday you know you can go to church and not be hung over that's a win right there you know going to church listening um, not having any dramas on your phone when you wake up you know stuff like <laughs> stuff like that you know life was just so good and I was scared that if I drank I might lose it so I didn't drink that day and I knew looking back I knew that this is, you know, God's been really good to me throughout my whole life, but I knew this is one chance that I had to stop. And if I blow it, who knows what's going to happen. But it was just one chance because I could never say no before. Like I said, there's always a birthday. There was always someone visiting from overseas. There's always a reason to drink. And I'm sure anyone listening, you'll know this. You know, you're trying to stop. Or even if you're trying to eat, eat right, you know. There's always something, oh, I thought tomorrow, no, 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 whatever. And it sucks because, um, because people, you know, it's disappointing because people don't help you. <laughs> people don't help you stay off the drink, man. People don't help you eat right. Oh, they do, but, you know, if it's the best thing for you, you just, you know, you wish people would help you, you know, especially the ones closest to you. But, you know, there are people close to you, but you know what I mean? Because you're trying to do something right for your life, man. And, you know, it's disappointing to see that that people that love you aren't supporting you the way you should. But, you know, that's life. Um, but, yeah, so I knew, I knew God gave me this one chance 
this one chance to get it right and I didn't want to I didn't want to stuff it up um, and I haven't yet but anyway um uh, one thing that really helped me was I was working at farmers at the time from 2011 to 2012 and there was a guy there his name's Mike and you know he I don't think he really I, I've told him before but he he's not he's oh uh, I don't know if he's hard or religious he's not a Christian I don't think he's a Christian but I, I don't you know I don't know if he has a belief on God but I love the guy to death and anyway he was four years sober when I started at farmers so you know what a oh yeah I don't know maybe he, anyway it was years but you know what a person to work with when you're trying to stay sober and the advice he gave me that might help someone was that don't put a number on it because sometimes it plays with your head or no sorry don't put a number on it and don't say never again because you know it just plays with your head like people will ask him have you had, when are you gonna drink he's like oh soon later not now not now because you know for some reason people want to get it out of you you know like you know like when are you gonna fail <laughs> yeah like when are you gonna you know and it's sad man but you know that another person that god placed in my life for me to learn off you know and it was awesome because he's such a he's a lovely man um and that was someone that god really helped me with another person was was my wife um she we started dating in 2011 um which was when i was off the off the bouncing off the walls mm -hmm. <laughs> and um the great thing about her was you know i was always drinking out on the street or that you know all that stuff but she wasn't which one thing helped during that that last year of craziness because i wasn't seeing her on this you know wasn't seeing her she wasn't not a hood rat no no offense to hood rats but you know she wasn't a hood rat and i wasn't bumping into her in the clubs and we weren't fighting in public all that kind of stuff um she's a very classy woman and what helped even more the next year was when i sobered up you know it helped because she didn't tell me to stop drinking which is cool because you know if someone has to tell you that the risk is that if they you know if it wasn't for them would you do it kind of thing um but anyway the next year in 2012 she 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 casual drink hey yeah you know she'll have her drinks or whatever but, but she ain't gonna die if she's not drinking which is the opposite of me um and you know i helped her i helped her <laughs> I, I asked her i asked her for help i said can it's funny because we were only dating for a year but i wanted her to help me but i was too insecure and too proud to say help me you know mm. and then so i you know it's funny because i'll be like oh you can drink if you want <laughs> i'll be all good you, know? you can drink if you want i'll be all good you know blah blah and when she says oh i might have a wine i'm like i'll start ignoring her and start <laughs> giving, being a sucky but anyway so anyway after that i just flat out asked her can you please help me like would you mind not drinking because i really need help you're the only one that can really ask for my boys ain't gonna stop drinking for me <laughs> sorry <laughs> but anyway she did um she said yeah it's not a big deal she won't drink because i can't handle not drinking and that's a massive help you know if if you are someone that's that's gonna help you it doesn't have to be your wife or your or your boyfriend or girlfriend at the time it can be your best friend it can be your dad your mom just anyone but that helped me heaps and um you know i'm not ashamed to say that at all um another thing was that really helped me she actually went to samoa after the first sorry that helped you <laughs> that two months was because um you know start marking the days man every day is a is a victory and it sounds stupid but one day turns into five five turns to 20 20 turns to 40 and then you're on your way every day is a challenge and every day is a victory at the same time um yeah so that's you know that's that's kind of my journey the beginning you know different mindsets that i i kind of went through was the first mindset was you can't drink at all you know drinking is bad and if anyone was to you know it was hard for me to to think that alcohol could be good in a way because i had abused it so much and it had you know shaped me you know it really did shape me like it shaped a lot of my life um and it, you know for someone to drink it, it kind of didn't make sense like why would you drink for and that was my mindset at the beginning but 
eventually you know over time like it's hard to swallow but it's like not everyone has the problem with alcohol that I did um, people can have it's possible for people to have to and eat and go home I I I had to be in those situations and around people and watch people drink to, to learn like far that's that's how you drink alcohol you drink you don't let it kick your ass sorry for swearing but you don't let it own you you have it you enjoy it and it's a blessed thing and then that's it you know you go home and you go to sleep it doesn't have to always lead to two in the morning or lead you to town or lead you to the clubs or you know lead lead you in that garage and be loud as and you know all that kind of stuff so that's how my mind it took years though it took years and what one thing i really enjoyed was there's a fellowship that i go to oh i, I wish i could go more um my, my jewish brother uh, yakov he you know they have they have their gatherings and they can break out a bottle of wine drink it share it talk keep their brains intact and that's when i saw that at his house i was like wow this is a beautiful thing because people can enjoy alcohol for what it is you know just a, a social occasion and that's it um so that's how my mindset changed it took years though it took years because when you know i you know, grew up around it um yeah i grew up around it like many of you would have or have not and you know it's it's just life um and you know i've ran you know i've ran into a few guys at my old job um and you know he was hung over when he came to work and we were talking and you know i really resonated with him and this moldy fella he i go you know we asked him about his night and he said talked he had a night before and he was drinking again tonight round two as people said and then he asked me if i drank and i go nah and then i explained to him and you know we aren't we don't share the same faith but he knew exactly where i was coming from that when you have one you're going all the way and that's the end of the story and you know i know everyone's not like this but for guys like him man we can resonate to them and we grew up getting wasted we grew up where alcohol means everything and if you're gonna have one it's game over because it could turns into five it turns into all this kind of stuff we're back now um i just had a few questions from my close mates that i grew up with um that i used to do life with back in back in the days uh, one of them i won't name them but don't embarrass them uh, one of them says what made you want to stop drinking altogether and i think i already went through that before um you know you go through stuff and then you notice that things it gets to a point where you notice it's really bad um and that whole thing you know with getting into trouble that was it really um but when you sober up you kind of it's funny because when you sober up you you know the things that you don't think about start to come to your head like you know i wasn't really thinking about uni um and how my drinking was affecting that but when you mind start clearing up you think about that and you think about your relationship with your parents um all that kind of stuff really um, the next question is does it get hard when I get together with the boys with my best friends it used to and um, it used to because we you know uh, we grew up together man we have been friends for over 10 years and we all we did was not all but we drank a lot together um, and you go through life's problems together <laughs> so when yeah so when you get to that point where i'm not drinking but they are it does get tough because you know you get I, to be honest I actually when i gave up drinking i thought i was we weren't going to be mates anymore eh? because that's how much we drank together um i was scared that i was going to lose my friends and um and our relationship definitely changed definitely changed it was weird at the beginning because you know you just want to be there and be amongst it and you want things to be the same except you're not drinking um but it's not you know nothing's the same unless it's the same and in terms of getting tempted i i used to get tempted but 
it's the same you know for me it's the same formula with any drink up you get there people start drinking it's all good and then you know you get to that point where you're tipsy and things are funny you know you're loose and all that and that's when I'd want to drink I'm like oh man nah I need a drink but you know what it's the same thing everywhere after an hour after an hour and a half people start talking loud people aren't listening people are talking smack and it just it just gets ugly man that's the truth really for me like it used to get hard but if I hang out at the drink up long enough I just see everyone losing their marbles after two hours so that's you know it's it's I didn't really think it would be like that because you know when you're a kid growing up you know when you wake up on a Sunday or whatever day after you drink you think father was such a cool night um it was so fun we had so many laughs and and but really like for me I used to I, I would think that too but for me like it's not the whole night that's funny it's just some of it <laughs> but a lot of it is just confusion people not list like you know what I mean like you have plans to go somewhere at nine o'clock but you're still at the place at 10 30 because no one's listening everyone's too drunk you know someone's arguing or something so that's the same you know I love my boys man but the same formula for them was with anywhere any other party give it long enough people just get drunk and it just sucks you just want to go home and it used to be to the point where I would want to hang around because I feel like if I go home I'm missing out um but the longer you hang out like I'll be there you know the first couple of weeks I'll be there till six and I'm sober but I'm going out clubbing and all that but it's, it's you're not really missing out on anything if you hang around long enough you realize it's not as it's not what it's cracked up to be maybe maybe when you're a kid growing up it's different because you're younger and it's more of an adventure and all that kind of stuff but you know to be honest it's it just isn't what it's cracked up to be and when you when you sober up you can look around and you know past that tipsy point nah and that was that was it for me and it, that's why i know long enough if i hang out a drink up long enough it's just gonna end up the same thing and when i think about it it was the same thing you know you'd have a good night and you want to replicate it replicate it but it's just the same thing over again talk kaka you know what i mean if you get drunk enough you're gonna talk kaka enough and it just ends up being the same thing um yeah so that's the temptation with my boys and um one thing is that now you one of the best things about being sober is that all the social skills and all the all the fun the real fun that you had as a kid it comes back because you can be comfortable in your own skin without having to drink without having to you know you don't have to drink to feel like a man you know you don't have to drink to feel like one of the boys or trying to be a thug or anything if you're not um you can just have all that fun sober and life's a lot a lot better for me anyway um would you ever have a drink again this is coming from the guy that used to <laughs> peer well not peer pressure but you know he's one of my best friends <laughs> always used to just have a drink have a drink and um you know i i'll say it right now i apologize to people that i used to peer pressure honestly because i was guilty of that i used to force my cousin who wasn't a big ass drinker to drink hard out thomas sorry bro <laughs> um yeah i really am sorry to anyone i used to peer pressure um but would i have another drink again i probably will um so. <laughs> <laughs> I probably will but like I, I, I want to enjoy it because you know I don't want alcohol to have a victory over me where I die sober because I couldn't handle it like I reckon I reckon um, if my kids when my kids get married I'll have a drink because it's something I really look forward to or if an, if they do an accomplishment or if something you know to do with my kids they're the only ones that are, or my wife they're the only ones that I'm gonna have a drink for and enjoy it because they're worth it you know um, yeah another thing I just wanted to touch on was that you know one thing I'm scared of the reason why I don't really think about drinking again is because if I have one I'm not sure if you know I might be okay for that day but then there's the next week will the first come back and to answer that question I met up with a, a good mate of mine last week he he stopped drinking for about two years 
and then he drank again but he only had the intention of just drinking a couple and then that's it but he and you know it's, it's really good that I talked to him last week and, he, and then but now he's been sober for another two years so he had a t- sorry I might get the years mixed up but a two year break he went back on the drink and then after three years had another two year break he said it was way harder to stop the second time than it was the first time and you know that's just a really really it was a real big eye opener for me because when I get complacent and think oh man you know the past is the, the past is definitely the past and you can leave it all behind but it doesn't mean that you're immune to temptation or you're immune to to you know just falling back again you know I know it's by God's grace that he's helped me and you know I don't want to abuse his grace if, if that's what the case is and um you know another thing is a good mate of mine when when I now we're talking about weddings and that when I got married in 2014 I was three years sober and one of my best friends who was in my line with me he he was sober too he was sober for longer than me probably like six years or something and then I me and him were talking about the day before my wedding we were talking to each other just quite like are you gonna have a drink and I said yeah I might and then I asked him, are you? And he goes, yeah, I will. And I said, okay. But then I changed my mind on the day of my wedding because I thought, if I drink, I don't know if I can stop again. And you know, the hard thing is, one of my best friends, he he's still finding it hard to stop. And this is five years ago. So, you know, like all these warnings and, the, and you know, the things that you see, you know, it kind of just validates some calls you make in life, you know? If other people might, you know, how many people have told me, bro, it's all good, just blah, 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 blah. But, you know, when I see what happened and when I hear from my mate saying that it's 10 times harder to quit the second time than it was the first time, you know, you're just grateful for those calls that you make. Um, another question. Were there more good times than bad times? There were definitely more good times than bad times. I had, I know I had a lot of fun with my mates, <laughs> my family. Um, but like I said, like, we would have still had good times sober, you know? So, you know, thinking back, good times, bad times, you know, I don't, you know, being sober would have been fun too. Just as fun without the headache, without the hangover, without all that kind of stuff. Um, and the bad times... You know, some people say that, you know, you got to have bad times to to learn from. And I guess that's true, you know. You, some people uh, learn a lot from the mistakes they've made. But, you know, for me, I I don't really like using that excuse, eh? Because, especially when it involves other people, you know, I, I could have done without those bad times, you know. You know, when you, you know... When you when you when you're consumed by alcohol so much, sorry, not it's not alcohol's problem, it's my problem. When when you abuse alcohol so much, you know you're not fit to turn up to places on time. You're not fit to 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 learn. You know what I mean? Like how many people have I disappointed because I I'm you know I was late to their wedding or times I've disappointed my wife because whatever you know. There's so many people that you let down because of what your life with the drink and it's you know you could do without it man you can do without disappointing people and I've been disappointed by people too you know I remember it was my son's um, first birthday and you know someone close to me didn't make it because they they had got home at seven six o'clock that morning and you know it did hurt me I was you know like we're 20 something years old now we're not we're not back at school you know what I mean and that's that's another thing with with the drink is like alcohol is just used too much as an excuse especially you know with people cheating on each other and all that kind of stuff like it's just it's just like it's a broken record man oh, i was wasted i uh, all this kind of stuff and like you know it's funny because you could have a night out with someone they say the dumbest things or do the dumbest things to people the next day wake up and because you know when you're hungover like there's that question of do they remember should i say sorry do i need to blah 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 and then it just gets brushed under the carpet you know all that kind of stuff and then it gets lost you know relationships are fractured and things aren't the same because 
of how, how people are when they're intoxicated and I'm the same and you know that's when it comes to bad times like you know they will humble me because I uh, I know what it's like but I, I'd rather do without it you know um, and that's why with, with people who do struggle to drink oh sorry st- struggle to stop drinking like I, I feel you man it is freaking hard it is so hard to stop drinking but the reason why I have this podcast episode and the reason why I'm so I like I believe in it so much is because if you can cut it out man the sky's the limit because there's so much baggage that it brings that you don't even realize until you sober up you know what I mean <laughs> like especially when you're at that age between 16 and 21 you know if you're on the drink and you know you're still growing up man you're still you're still trying to figure out for yourself what you're like add in getting a horse add in getting pep add in peer pressure add in not being guided how to deal with alcohol on top of that it just makes the process that much longer you know i'm 29 now and i guess when i was like 27 26 you know you kind of get a grip like okay you know you know obviously you got still a lot a lot more to learn but you know what i mean you it's a big it's a big delay that is unnecessary life's already short as it is if if you're dealing you know if if you can relate to some way with the drink and you and you want to cut it cut it bro because man your mind gets so freed up mentally physically you'll be better you won't you know all that kind of stuff like it uh, you know I still I'm still so grateful to this day that I that the Lord's blessed me to not drink you know um let's go how did the way you drink affect people in your life oh man lucky lucky my mom and my sister kind of, <laughs> hopefully they don't watch this because they'll be swearing at the TV but yeah it's the same thing like I, I'm not sure if it's the case, but I know with Mavis, um, she started drinking 21 at... 19? No, 19. You told me 21. <laughs> nah. Okay, 19. You know, someone starting at 15 is much different when you're 19, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, those who drink, I feel like because she drank... Oh, what, are you shaking your head? No. Oh, those, you know, I feel like those who drink a little bit later after the growing up or a bit more growing up it makes it a bit better because when you're a little kid and you're still learning things like and you're learning that from other people and all that and then that scene it kind of i don't know i just feel like by the time you're 20 you got to unlearn all that stuff when you're 15 um if that makes sense but the way it affected the people in my life oh man i feel i hate it eh? like you know when it comes to letting people down if i used to let my mom down a lot um you know church stuff um you know i would have to be that you know she, she you know got to the point where she just gave up on me didn't force me to come to church with her anymore because she knew but there'll be big events like you know combines and all that that you know she depended on me to be there for and then like this is heaps of stuff but this is a mention um you know, I'd be out drinking, I'll get, you know, my mum said, be home at 7 so that we can go, but like, I'll, I'll be home at 6.50, you know, technically before 7, but I'm, um, you know, a reek of alcohol, I'm in no state to, you know what I mean? Just stuff like that, man. My sister, probably the same thing. Um, I won't share that phone or one, but, oh, yeah, well, no, nah, no, nah, I won't. <laughs> but, you know, it's only now and you know like i guess when you stop for the first time people don't believe it partly because they know what you're like and um and you know it's fair play you know if you've built a reputation of being a certain way then you've got to earn the reputation of leaving that in the past but you know at the same time some people just don't want to help man they would rather you know they would rather you not for whatever reason but find those who will help you find man and hold on to them because they're the, they're the most precious thing in your life because people who want you to see people who want you to do well even if they don't benefit from it those are the best people you can have and you can pay the favor back um what was your first experience with alcohol uh mine was at a drink up with my cousins oh uh, who? I'm not gonna say who. I'm not gonna throw them under the bus. <laughs> um, nah. Yeah, we're my cousins, and you know what? I can, 
I, that's why, you know, when I see kids drinking and they're, they're having the time of their life and they're drunk and they're spilling their guts and telling all that, you know, saying all these things, I can relate, you know, I, I know what it's like, that, that excitement factor where it's something new and you know what I mean? And it's kind of like when you're younger and you drink around older people, you kind of feel accepted like, oh man, I'm, I'm with the older people now and blah, blah, blah. And so yeah, it was a drink with my cousins and but you know, in the end, all that, all those things can be done sober without the baggage of stuff that comes. Um, did you try and give it a go beforehand, bro? I tried. How many times to give up? How many times? I remember, yeah, I, I remember I went out once and I got into this. We got into this massive fight in town, and it was ugly, man. Like my car was smashed up. I was smashed up. My friends were and. That was one time I really tried. I was like, oh, bro, if this, man, I hate this. You know, and I had to go to, um, I feel sorry for my mum, you know, because my, my brother's passed away a long time ago. And, you know, I think my mum still has that fear factor. And, you know, when she gets that call that something's happened. And that was the call with me. Like, I remember I had to give her a click call in town and say, oh, I'm beat up. Can you please pick me up? And then... I said, I'm on, you know, with parents, bro, <laughs> I was like, I'm on Queen Street, on the, underneath the sign, I'm right here, and like, I don't, she drove past me like 20 times trying to get me, anyway, she eventually got me, but my phone had died, so I couldn't call her back, and, and man, I remember the, later on that night, I charged my phone, and I listened to the voicemail, for, uh, she called me like a hundred times crying, like, oh, where are you, where are you, and, you know what I mean, like, this is stuff that, you know, that I put my mom through and people can put their parents through or their loved ones like, you know, I mean, she always tells me that, that phone call, when she hears the phone ring that night that she found out about my brother just comes back, you know, so, you know, and it hurt me, man, listening to it, like, she's just wailing on the phone, like, and she doesn't have a cell phone, so she's calling from home, like, she will look for me, go back, call me, try and look, you know, for some reason she thinks my phone's going to be alive, but... You know that's what parents do for you that love you you know so you know that that's how it's affected people in my life but the good thing is when you sober up you, you've got a chance to get it right you know and that's for anyone you've always got a chance to get it right and tell people you love them and stuff like that and and, and apologize i guess that's the best thing is to apologize and because you got, you're in the right frame of mind you don't have to wait till you're drunk to apologize and then people forget it the next day or Stuff like that. Um, did you have anything? No? I, <laughs> um, one thing, I guess there are definite benefits of being sober. Um, one of them is that uh, one thing I kind of like anyone anyone who's drinking a lot that might be drinking too, more, uh, too much than they should be is that you try and get a video uh, get your phone and record yourself at a drink up and I don't just mean the good times I mean the whole night and then watch yourself and you'll be shocked at what you see man don't just don't just watch what you put on Instagram don't just watch what you put on your story watch yourself the whole night and you'll be able to you know if if what you see is not who you think you are then have a think about your relationship with the drink and this you know for boys it can be you turn into a gangster or you turn into someone tough but for girls man it's if your clothes are starting to get a bit thinner or if you're leaning on guys a bit too much or you're showing some skin that you weren't showing before like really think about or your relationship with the, think about your own relationship with yourself first but you know what I mean like if it's making you change into someone that you don't you if you can't watch yourself then that's a sign um to have a think about it so the benefit from that is that you're in control every time you do something obviously in life it's hard it's hard to not be an idiot it's hard to not be an idiot when you're sober you know it's hard to not it's hard to deal with conflict it's hard to deal with work your family all that stuff when you're sober imagine the drink oh I'll put up the stand did it show?
Yeah. Honest. I was just going to count it. No, we can't. It's all good. Um, yeah. Honestly. Yeah. If, you know, it's life is hard as it is, but, you know, when, when you add in intoxication and and losing yourself and oh, it's because I'm banging the same way yeah. um, if when you add on all that stuff imagine how much harder it is um, the, the good thing about being sober is that is that you're sober man you can st- you know over time I know one of Mavis's cousins they just sobered up too and we were at um, at the club for a band day I won't say who but we, we went to go dance and he goes oh nah I'm not ready to dance sober yet <laughs> and bro that's that's the truth man like it's it's a whole process of rewiring your brain and rewiring your your social settings and just stuff like that um, but eventually you can do everything sober again you can go you can go back to uh, being a kid where you can express yourself and you can socialize and you're not so self-conscious like you are when sorry you're not self-conscious when you're I don't know if you're self-conscious when you're drunk but you know when you you know when you go out and you get really drunk and then the next day you have those thoughts like oh my gosh what was I you know you're not sure of what you were like or you know it's funny when you see people that when you see a group of people that were with each other the last week or the night before at like work colleagues or something and you can see the interaction you know it's like people are you're trying to read each other's minds you're trying to think you know was i this was i behaving like that blah 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 so all that stuff you know is out the window you never it's not the headache of dealing with that anymore you know what you were like you can conduct yourself in a way that you're in control and you don't have to deal with that mess um Sorry, now that we've said that, one another thing that was eye opener while I was drinking was that uh, it was really bad. Um, anyway, we had a f- work function, and um, I got incredibly drunk. I don't remember parts of it. I remember some of it, but and I remember we we had we had work the next day or the next weekend, and then I remember. Every, not everyone, but I definitely felt like something was up. Not not right away, but when I started talking to people, they they weren't really talking to me back, you know. They weren't really they were being polite, but not really talking to me back. And then I asked my friend, my good mate, who worked with me. I go, bro, why are these guys like acting like this towards me? And then he told me, he goes, bro, don't you remember last week? And I was like, no. And he goes, bro, you were an, a total idiot. And I was like, I thought he was kidding. I was like, are you sure? And he goes, yeah. If, and he, he was like, bro, you were a dick. Like, and then I told him, I, I can't remember. And he, then he walked me through it. And I was like, oh. And then you know that moment when you remember? Oh, it was, it was one of the worst feelings of my life. Of my, honestly, of my life. And then, um. And then I go to him, why, why was I acting like that? And then he, he's one of my best friends, and he goes, bro, you're always like that when you drink, oh, when you get too drunk. And then, and it was sad, because he was kind of pissed off when he said that to me, eh? I was, he was like, you're always like that, oh, are you serious? So, yeah, so if, you know, if, if anyone can relate to that, I feel you, man, and, to, you know, at this point in time, you can, I can look back and it's, you know, you can even talk about it with those people because, you know, time, I guess, heals everything. Well, the Lord heals everything. And, you know, you can, it's, it's really nice to look back and, and know that the past is the past. And that, you you know, this, you really, you're, you've moved on with life and stuff like that. So, that's it for me, I think. That's enough there. So, yeah, that's, that's it for me now, eight years. Um, it's been, I thank the Lord. I should thank him every day, but this is something that I'm very grateful for. I would, I would never trade back. Um, but anyone, man, if, if, you, if you got problems with the drink, honestly, man, 
if you get rid of it, you, you it might do more good for you than you know. If, and if, if you are in the middle of it, bro, I know one of my best mates is a, a couple of a month or so. He go hard, bro, because when you when you get your mind back, when you get your life back, it's the best feeling. It really, really is. And and you guys who drink responsibly. Keep doing what you're doing, man, because I love watching people who are responsible drinkers drink, and, you know, it's a beautiful uh, sight to watch. Um, and that's it. So, take care. Hope you haven't fallen asleep. And that's it. So, can I drink then if I drink responsibly? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>